Hey everyone, it's Justine, and I think there's nothing more helpful than learning how someone actually goes about creating a card. It's so much more valuable than actually learning how to create a specific card, but actually learning the process of our favorite creators. So today I'm here to show you in the chaos of my brain, how I go about creating cards, especially when I'm creating multiple cards in one sitting and I'm creating using a kit or I'm creating using a collection. So products that are meant to kind of work together. So today my Falling Leaves release is now available, six products in total. And I wanna show you when I'm working with these products all together and creating the inspiration for the collection, how I go about doing it. Now I might confuse the heck out of you, but who cares? Let's get diving in and let's see what the chaos of my brain brings to you. Now, when I create a collection, it's meant to work as a collection. So I thought it might be interesting for you to see my thought process behind how I go about and create these cards. So I created nine cards in one sitting and I never really finish one card from start to finish before moving on to the other. So I wanna show you how I do that and take you along for the ride. So I'm getting started with the stencil. I'm gonna grab my grip mat and I'm gonna grab four colors of ink, your typical autumn colors, yellow, orange, red, and brown, any brand will work. I'm grabbing some blending tools here. I find going in with the domed tools, which is what I use often in my videos, I don't use those for intricate stencils like this. And the reason being, is a lot of the times they'll get cut up with all of these details. So I prefer to use something like a brush with bristles. Now there are two ways that you can use this stencil. Of course, there's other ways too. You could just do a simple one color background or a gradient pattern, but I did one where I kind of did random colors of blending everywhere, but there's also the option to use masking tape in order to mask off each individual leaf and give each leaf its own color. Both of them work really nicely and so it just depends on how much work you want to do because the masking does take a little bit of time but I did find I could reuse these pieces of tape over and over again and I really enjoyed doing it this way. Now the way I go about laying out the colors is relatively random. I just try to avoid having two of the same color next to each other. So you can see how this gives you a completely different look to your background. So I'm going to set these two backgrounds off to the side and complete them later. In the meantime, I'm going to continue with different collections, different stamps, trying things out, different techniques. So I went ahead and I grabbed the Falling Leaves stamp and I wanted to play with this for a little while. And this is a really cool set because it's a layering stamp. You could use the outline on its own or you could use the solid on its own. So I wanted to try the stamps out in each way. So for this one here in particular, I'm trying it out as a layering stamp. So I started with my first stamp, then layered the solid stamp inside. And I love the variety of looks that you can get with this. They look really amazing. I went ahead and I grabbed a piece of masking paper and I just went and stamped this again. I wanna be able to create a cluster of leaves while keeping things relatively one layer so that I can stamp on top of them. Don't forget, if you're new to my collections, I actually always come out with an inspiration guide for my card collection. So you can actually download this for free. Whether you get the collection or not, there's some amazing cards in there, some inspiration, all the photos, instructions, supply lists, and everything you need. So be sure to download that. The link is below in the description. So I went ahead and cut out the leaf and then removed the sticky backing here and attached it over top of my leaf. Now this is going to protect everything underneath it because it's kind of like a sticker. So I could go ahead and layer on this leaf, for example, and this leaf is going to appear like it's behind the leaf we just stamped. So I'm just doing some very simple masking techniques here, nothing super fancy, but I am switching up the colors each time. Not only that of the solid part, but also of the outline. And oftentimes when I'm sitting down to create with a bundle or a collection, I will have a color palette ready to go like this yellow, orange, red, and brown. And I will work with that throughout the entire card process unless I feel like I need something like maybe a black ink or something like that for a sentiment. That way I keep things relatively simple. I have a certain amount of stamps and dyes that I'm gonna be working with. And then I have my certain colors of ink and I also generally stick to white cardstock for the most part, unless an idea pops into my head to do something else. So I'm continuing on here with the masking and I'm just layering my third leaf. I really love clean and simple cards. So this is definitely a perfect design for that. Keeping things relatively white, 
doing some masking to keep things one layer and then just having a cluster of color on a certain part of the card. Usually I like to stick to the rule of threes as well. So I have three, three leaves here. They're kind of in a triangular shape, which is very appealing to the eye. So once again, I have another background or start to the card done. So I'm just going to set that off to the side. So you can see I kind of work randomly and there's a reason for that. Um, because I tend to create my cards for a stash of cards that I send out or sometimes I don't send out, I like to just create cards for the fun of it a lot of the time. I don't really particularly care what kind of sentiment goes on top. So I'll pick a whole bunch of random sentiments and sometimes I won't even finish the card so I can add a sentiment for the occasion that I need when the time comes. So I've gone ahead and I've stamped these two solid stamps. As I said, I wanted to see how these stamps kind of work on their own and together. And I decided to pair them up with some black die cuts here, introducing another part of the collection, which is the Falling Leaves die set. So it comes with six different shapes of dies, and you can do some really amazing things with them, as you'll see in a little while. So I decided to add two of them here over top of the leaves that we just stamped. And I think that's a great start. All it really needs at this point is a sentiment, so I'm going to set it off to the side. I'm not sure if this is how you work either so randomly and crazily, but when I work with a collection, this is just kind of how I roll. All right, so I've cut this piece of patterned paper to five by three and three quarters. So it's a half an inch smaller than the A2 size card base, which means you get a quarter inch border around all of the sides. I wanted to have a nice white area to help the pattern paper pop as well as the colors. And I think that this color really looks great against the white cardstock. And I think some of these die cuts are gonna look really nice because the die cuts kind of match the patterned paper. And so I'm gonna cut these with some white cardstock out of a scrap piece of paper. And again, the nice thing is when you are die cutting these, you have choices. So you can keep them as I have them here or you can cut, you can just pop out those tiny pieces. They pop out super easily and you can have the outlines of them just like the pattern paper. But if I had done the outlines, I think these would have got lost on the card and the pattern paper would have been too dominant. So I decided to glue these two here with all the pieces in between and then move on. All right, so going into the next card here, I am cutting this down to about two inches and it's going to be the width of my card. And I'm going to go ahead and add this to some black cardstock. So oftentimes I don't go in and particularly measure absolutely everything. So a lot of the times I'll go in like this where I glue it to a piece of black cardstock and then just trim it down. And that way I can um, have a black border around it, but I don't need to be all tedious with my measurements. <laughs> so I'm going to grab and make some embellishments for this particular card. I added these leaves that you saw in the die cut form to the hot foil plate. There are also hot foil plates included in that set with the same two sets of leaves. And I'm going to run these through my die cutting machine after I've heated them and added my foil. And I'm going to create these two leaves here in foil form. So you can see how shiny they look. They look absolutely amazing. I got a little bit of overfoiling there because my foil was too big, but I'm just gonna die cut them anyway, so that's not a big deal whatsoever. So I'm just going to use the coordinating dies here to stick them in place. And I am going to run these through my die cutting machine. I'm gonna set that off to the side and I hope I'm not totally confusing you, but I kind of just wanted to show you a glimpse inside of the creative mind of me when I'm working with something like this. And so I'm just creating backgrounds essentially and starting cards so that I can finish them all at the end. Because I find the end of the card, adding the sentiments, adding the embellishments, I tend to use the same things. So I might as well just do them all at once rather than get out my die cutting machine cut out the sentiment, glue it on, and then getting it out again with each one of these cards. Okay, so I am creating probably my favorite cards out of the collection now, and I'm creating on a large piece of white paper, and I am using all four of the same colors that I chose before in a random pattern all over the cardstock. 
and I'm covering the entire background. And sometimes I figure instead of, sometimes I'll cut it down to a card base size, like an A2 size card. And sometimes I'll do it on a large sheet of paper so that I get multiple backgrounds or I can cut a lot of things out of it. If I have the inks out, if I have the blending tool and I have the paper out already, why not cut more or why not create more? All right, so I'm just gonna set my panel that I created here off to dry. And when I'm certain it's dry, I'm gonna run my die cuts through here. And this is why I don't worry too much about my ink blending being perfect because I can always just die cut out of it after if I feel like the transitions are weird or I get any sort of harsh lines or anything like that. This was my intention from the start, so it wasn't a big deal. But I'm gonna go ahead and lay down all of the leaves that come in the dye collection and I'm gonna cut out the whole background worth of leaves. Off screen, I have also cut out these leaves in gold cardstock as well and I saved not only the outlines of these but also the inner pieces of them and that's really important when it comes to creating this card. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down these leaf frames as I like to refer to them as onto my white piece of cardstock in a random order. Then I'm going to use the insides of these leaves here. I'm just going to shimmy them out and I'm going to use them to fill in the gaps of each one of these leaves. So I just go in with some glue here, making sure to glue all the areas down, especially on the areas of the card that the leaves hang off of the card. That's really important that you get good glue coverage there. And I'm just going to fill all of these in. And any of the areas that are hanging off of the leaf, I'm going to use these pieces as well. So when I go ahead and I turn over my cardstock to trim those leaves, sorry, I'm a little off screen there, all of these pieces I am going to save and then I'm going to use them to fill in any sort of gaps. So I use all of those little pieces that I cut out on off of my cardstock to go along the edge and fill in any white areas. That way not a lot is going to waste and I don't need to make as many die cuts to make the background look quite full. Now I decided to go ahead and fill in some of the gaps here. So I wanted to fill this card with a lot of gold and make it look really elegant looking. So I went ahead and added glue dots, all sorts of random areas on the card, trying to not make anything go in a straight line, either up and down or left and right, but always have them kind of on an angle to each other. And then I just place the confetti down and be done with it. I find that the more that I think about sequin placement, the worse I am at it. So I just try and make it super random with my glue bottle and then just go from there. So you can see here, this background is all finished. I'm gonna set it off to the side to finish later. But I still have a lot of those leaves left over, so why not continue to use them? I'm gonna go ahead and use the outlines this time that I created with those ink uh, blending, with the ink blending technique, and I'm gonna fill in the insides with some gold. Or you could, of course, leave them as the outline. It's completely up to you in this case. And again, I'm a big fan of clean and simple, so I'm just gonna stop the card there, out of sentiment and embellishments probably, and be completely done with it. And that's when in my pile, I saw this here, and this is not gonna go to waste. This is where I cut out all of the dies earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my favorite area on this die set created background thing that I <laughs> made, and I'm gonna cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, the exact same size as an A2 size card panel, because I think I'm gonna be able to use this. So I'm going through and just gluing all of the areas here and then I'm gonna stick it onto my card panel. I'm gonna begin by filling the areas with some of the gold outlines that I have here and it looks like I'm probably gonna to need to cut out a few more, but I just wanna use as much of these pieces as I can. And you can see here the finished background when I have all of those pieces in there. I think this would look great with black as well. So for my last card background, before everything starts to come together, I'm gonna go ahead and add a whole bunch of these stamps to the background. And I wanted to use these just as an outline the way that they are without the solid piece. So I do try to use my stamps when I get them in every way that I can think of. Solids, lines, putting them together, um, embossing them, stamping them, uh, anything that I think will go with them. And that's where I have a class called Got Stamps Now What? that is kind of where that comes in handy. It allows you to assign a category to your um, supplies 
and then you're able to see which techniques you can do with those types of stamps. And this helps me kind of get the most out of them. And so I try and figure out how to use them in each and every way possible. I'm now covering my stamps with some gold embossing powder, and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat set that to create this really lovely fall background that is a little on the darker side, still very elegant and keeping up with the theme. And when that's all heated and ready to go, I'm gonna set that off to the side and let's get going on how I finish all of my cards. So this is the thankful die set and it comes with, I believe five sentiments. And I have really been missing in the industry. I've been looking for these for ages. And then I thought to myself, well, why don't you make them? Um, I'm looking for a very printed font where I don't have to glue individual letters where they're all attached, except for maybe the dot on the eye. I mean, I can live with that. Um, and that they also contain a shadow die. And I don't find that there's many of them out there, so I decided to create them myself. So I cut these in white, in black, in gold, in a whole bunch of different colors so that I can just grab and go. Now the same thing also goes with the shadow dies. These go behind the die cut, they don't function on their own. And same idea, I try to go in and cut them out of gold, black, white, any color that I think is gonna go well with the color combination that I chose for all of the backgrounds. In this case, the yellow, orange, red, and brown, and then also those kind of pinky tones with the pattern paper. And I'm just cutting a whole bunch of them because we're gonna glue them all at once and anything we have left over, we can add to our stash for later. I'll usually organize them into piles as well so that I don't get myself confused and I can just grab and, and glue as I wish. And I'm just gonna grab each one of these, glue them on here, and you can see they're all attached, so they're very easy to use. I recommend using liquid glue because they might get a little wonky when you first put them down, but you can just kind of nudge them into place. And I love these die cuts. I think they're absolutely fantastic. And then what I do is I take each and every one of my backgrounds and stick my sentiments on them. I'll stick them in different areas too, like the bottom right hand corner is one of my favorites, or sometimes a little more centered. Then right in the center towards the top, another favorite place to put a sentiment of mine. And this is kind of just how I go about it. I usually tend to gear towards the right side of the card, I'm not too sure why, or the center, very rarely the left. And you can see just how quickly they all come together. And if I were to go ahead and create these backgrounds and then add these dies, it probably would have taken me like 10 times longer to make all of these cards versus making the backgrounds first and then adding the sentiments towards the end. And you'll see I'm also varying it up with liquid glue as well as 3D and 3D foam tape. And now and again, I'll have a moment where I grab one of my backgrounds and I go to add the sentiment and I don't quite feel like the sentiment is enough. And that's where I like to go ahead and add a shape die. Usually a circle, a square, rectangle or diamond will be my go-to choice. And that way it kind of helps it pop off the background. It helps it stick out. And it, I just find stenciled backgrounds when you do a whole panel of them a little bit busy. So it just tones everything down a little bit and brings the focus back to the sentiment. All right, then usually at the very end, once my cards are nearly complete at this point, I will go in and I will create a, an embellishment station kind of thing. I'll grab a whole bunch of glue and really just randomly put a whole bunch of dots here and there. You're also getting a little bit of a sneak preview as to what I'm showing my VIP group as far as creating goes down in the center. Those are two cards I didn't create in this video. I saved that for my VIP group. But this is just what I wanted to show you as to how I go about adding my embellishments. Really random, super quick, and then just adding pretty much the same embellishments to all my cards. You can of course switch these up as you like. I felt kind of with that pink background, for example, gold confetti wasn't what I wanted to use. I ended up using some pearls, but yeah, I just wanted to show you a little bit about how I make things come together relatively quickly. All right, so I hope that was helpful to take a look inside my brain. I have two videos here as a recommendation. If you want to check out my Christmas Village collection or my Sunflower Smiles collection, since there is free shipping over $80, I like to kind of show everything that's out right now so you can mix and match and grab your favorite things. So be for sure to check them out. You'll get tons of inspiration there and I will see you soon for another video. Bye.